निर्भिन्न पास नाम तत्व गुरु तत्व एवरी पैर इन वेदांत उपनिषद स्पेशली इन श्रीमद भागवत Glorification of Satguru has been given. Here, there, everywhere. Nam is transcendental. It is true, and it is written in Shastra. And we are hearing from so many persons that we should chant holy name. But if anyone tells that I am I have read it here and there that we should chant Hari name. So I am chanting. What is the need of a guru like a dalal? Agent, broker. Agent, medi broker. Mediator. Mediator. What is this? We know so many glorification that Ajami, how easily. Oh. <coughs> He went to buy punt. Though he has no first knew the glorification of name, how he? So we should do and chant her name without making any guru patha. If anyone is chanting without guru, what will be the result? By So Guru Maharaj asking very important question. If I can chant, the scriptures are describing the glories of Harinam. So I can chant Harinam, then what necessary Guru? So this very vast topic, so many, many points can come up. I will try and mention some. So, Jayati Jayati Nama Nanda Rupam Murari Vilamita Nija Dharma Jana Puja Vyatmam Katama Pesha Kititam Mukti Nam Prani Nama Palam Ritam Eka Jivanam Bhushanam In this verse it's described all glories to the Nam of Krishna Murari which is himself Krishna himself. That name is so powerful, just by chanting it, one will automatically become free from the necessity to engage in all types of troublesome activity <coughs> like mundane dharma, puja, different naimitic dharmas. But if one takes the name only one time, with faith or with no faith at all, that Hari Nam is so powerful, it can merely give you mukti. So many, many verses are there. Madara Madara Meta Mangala Mangalanam Sukitam Nigamavali Sakalam Chit Sarupam Sakitam Polygitam Sakitam Polygitam Sadhaya Hilaya 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 if you take all Brahmana, this name of all sweet things, this name is the most sweetest of all auspicious things, this name is the most auspicious. If one takes the holy name, even one time, with faith or with no faith at all, that holy name will immediately take you across the ocean of birth and death. So holy name, <coughs> chanted with no faith at all, can give you such a result. Like Ajamil, at the time of death, he saw the four, the three Yamadutas coming for him. He had no understanding of the glories of the holy name. And seeing his young son, who's a small baby, two or three years old, he called, On the Ryan! One time. 
that time he had no consideration of the power, the glory of the Holy Name. He was indicating his son. So we know the four types of Namabas. So there this is Sanket. There is an Ajima who was indicating his son, he was not indicating the Holy Name or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What is the result? Immediately he became free from millions and millions of births of past sinful activity. So actually the Srimad Bhagavatam is full of so many histories of devotees in lower stage who have taken Harinam not understanding the glories or what that Harinam can do, give. So Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vidraha. That Harinam is Chintamani. Chintamani means whatever you desire from that Harinam, Harinam will give you. So generally people are mad for the four material benefits, Dharma, Atta, Karma or Moksha. <coughs> They are now only giving instructions to Sri Palad Maharaj. Dharma, Atta, Kama, Moksham, Yadichya, Shrayamatmana. Is it? Karanam, Parasevanam. Only by doing a little touch of devotional service in the form of chanting Harinam, automatically one will fulfill any desire in Dharma, meaning mundane religiosity. Atta meaning economic development. Kama meaning sense gratification. Or the greatest of the four, Chapurusata, that means Mukti. Harinam will give without a doubt, without a doubt, without a doubt. But... What is the question? Come on that subject. So the point is, then what necessary guru? So Harinam will give you all these results, but when you get Krishna Prem? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is directly Radha Krishna. This is given in Sambhoda Vasya. This is given... O Radhe, O Krishna. So you can call for Radharani and call for Krishna, but your relationship with Radha Krishna, where will that come from? Who will give you that? So that is coming from Guru. So therefore one should be very careful to take mantra from a pure Guru. Yo Guru Saswayam Hari Yo Yo Mantra Sat Guru Swayam Yo Yo Mantra Sat Ya Guru Sat First laugh and then First laugh. Don't tell. If he remembers, he should tell. So that verse saying, we know that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is directly non-different than the mantra that he gives. And that Guru is also, and that guru is also non-different than the Supreme Personality of Hari. So Guru is non-different than the mantra he gives. What is the meaning? That we want to chant the pure holy name. Not Nama Bas or Nama Parad. Therefore, in Sadhu Sangha, in the association of those pure Vaishnavas, the pure holy name will come. But without Sadhu Sangha, one can never chant the pure holy name. One can chant like Ajamil and at best get Mukti. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying, Sadhu Sang, Nam Kirtan, E Matra Chai, Samsara Jinate Para, or Akhonda Vastunai. Asadhu Sangha Bhai, Krishna Nam Kabunai, Bohir Aksharam, Bohir Bhate Nam Kabunai. Oh, my dear brother, because you are taking Asat Sangha. Asat Sangha means you are taking association of those who are not fully immersed in the chanting of a holy name. Therefore, the pure holy name never comes in your tongue. What comes? Aksha, on the alphabets. Hare Krishna. So, Nijivila Prasta Srila Gauguman used to make this very easily understood. We are chanting Hare Krishna. So. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Oh, clarify this subject. Mara. Clarify. Clearly you should tell. <coughs> what was the question? <coughs> you should try to give answer. Guru <coughs> Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Srila so, Gurudev, what it mean to clarify the question and the answer? So, according to my limited understanding by His mercy, I'll try to speak a few words. First of all, throughout Shastra, it has been told, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam Eva Kevalam. Only this name, this name can give you all success in your life. You can be liberated from this world simply by the power of name. 
So if the name is so powerful and independent, then what is the necessity <coughs> of taking shelter of Sadhguru and receiving the mantra from the lotus lips of Sadhguru? So we see that there are three types of chanting. First type is called Nam Aparaj, making offenses to the name. If someone is chanting the name of Krishna, but they have a conception, I am God, Lord Shiva is God, Ganesh is God, they have a mixed up conception. Or they think that, oh, by chanting this name, it is like a pious activity, mundane activity. Otherwise, they think that by chanting this name, I can be free from sins. So I'll commit sinful activities, chant this name and be free from my sins. It, this is a very good business. So those who have so many misconceptions about chanting, they're called Nam Aparadi, the offenders to the holy name. But those who will understand what the offenses are and try to avoid them, otherwise they chant the name and they're completely ignorant of what the offenses are and therefore also they don't commit any offenses. Then their chanting can be called Nam Abhas. That means a semblance of the name. Still it is not the name. Why? Because in Puranas and Sri Rupa Goswami Pai has quoted in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Atak Shri Krishna Namadi Na Bhavet Grayan Indriyai. Actually, the name, the form, the qualities, the pastimes of Krishna, they are all Satchidananda Moy. They are all transcendental. Yet, this body, the mind, the tongue, they are all material. And therefore, Atak Shri Krishna Namadi Na Bhavet Grayan Indriyai. The, anyone, a conditioned soul in this world, they cannot touch the name of Krishna or any of his <coughs> transcendental attributes. So when they are chanting, this sound which is coming out, this is not the Shabda Brahma, the transcendental name which is non different from Krishna. This is called Shabda Samanya, ordinary sound vibration. This ordinary sound vibration does not have the power to establish one in his eternal relationship with Krishna and take one back home, back to Godhead. Those who chant an ordinary vibration, they may get dharma, religiosity, artha, economic development, and calm, the fulfillment of their desires. And those who will give up offenses to the name and chant nama Bas, the semblance of Krishna's name, they may get mukti, mukti, liberation. But what is the fruit of chanting Krishna Nam? Taranadhyayi, sarva shasta, nama sankirtan, nirapara, nam lale pai premadhan. She cannot be explained. The best process of bhakti is to chant Harinam. And the fruit of chanting Krishna Nam, the real fruit and highest fruit, that is to attain Krishna Prem. <coughs> Yet, if a devotee giving up all offenses against the name, he chants Krishna Nam, still Prem will not come. And the reason for this is that uh, Sri uh, Radhanath Prabhu touched this point. That he has no sambandha gyan. That means knowledge of his relationship with Krishna. He's not established in this. Therefore, Asat Sanubai Krishna Nam Nayai Bahiranga Namakshara Bahirai Tabu Bhakti Namakabu Nai. If someone is only chanting but not doing Sadhu Sangha, then their chanting is an external vibration. It is not the transcendental name. But if they'll come in the association of Sadhguru, and they will receive a Diksha Mantra from Guru. By the influence of this Diksha Mantra and association, the Jivas <coughs> and Anartas, they gradually dispelled. He has faith, he begins to chant, his Anartas are cleared, and he becomes established in Sambandha Gyan. He begins to realize what is his relationship with Krishna by the influence of that association. By doing Kirtan, in the association of pure devotees, then Shreya Kaiva Chandika Vitaranam. Their kirtan is full of bhav, full of Vishuddha Sattva, this mood, and it reflects in the heart of the jiva and illuminates his heart and Vidyavadhu Jivanam. He becomes established in his relationship with Radha and Krishna. Only when the jiva is established in Sambandha Gyan, having relationship with Radha and Krishna, and he begins to serve them internally, then at that time the pure name by the Achicha Shakti will manifest on the tongue 
Therefore, Rupa Goswami Pants is telling us, Atakshi Krishna Namadi Nagavet Grail Indriyai. Oh, your senses cannot touch his name. But, Sevan Mukhe He. Only at that time, when you become Sevan Muk, that means being established in Sambandha Gyan, and his soul is inclined and attentive. I want to serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna in one particular mood and relationship. Sevan Muk He. Only at that time, when he's attentive to service. Jiva Ado Swayam Evas When he begins his service, when his spiritual senses begin to chant the name of Krishna, this name is pure. <coughs> the name chanted by spiritual senses, this is pure. And then, by the influence of Achincha Shakti, that name which is pure manifests on the senses of the external body. This is called Swayam Eva Spratyadaha. Beginning with the tongue, first on the tongue, and then on all the senses. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described this. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. When we do kirtan, chanting Krishna name, with Sambandha Gyan, being established with rela in relationship, that is called kirtan, with Sambandha Gyan, is called Sankirtan. When we do Sankirtan, then Param Vijayate, there will be complete victory of that name. In other words, that name conquers the heart, conquers the tongue, eyes, ears, and all senses, and completely possesses that person, as someone is possessed by a ghost. The example is there of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was caught by the fisherman. When the fisherman touched him, he began to chant, Krishna, 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 Krishna. And when he met Saurabh Damana, he said, don't go there, there's a very powerful ghost. Saurabh Damana said, don't be alarmed, I am a famous exorcist. And he put his hand in his head and slapped him, and then he became pacified. Another example, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met Prakashananda Sarasvati, Prakashananda Sarasvati told him, you were supposed to be a sannyasi. Why are you singing and dancing and chanting with so many thousands of people? You should be like me and sit and chant, Aham Brahmasmi, Prakyanam Brahman. I am Brahma, you are Brahma, we are all Brahma, everything is Brahma. Why are you chanting? Mahaprabhu told him, no, my Gurudev gave me this mantra and when I began to chant, I had Darshan of Krishna. Actually, I am not chanting, I am not dancing. This name dances on my tongue and makes me chant. And this name possesses me, my body. And this name makes me dance. So this is Shuddhanam. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. When Kirtan is done by a devotee who is established in Sambandha Gyan, that transcendental name coming from his soul's form, manifests in the external body and, and completely controls him. This is the complete victory of the Sankirtana. Therefore, if one wants to come to this platform of chanting, Vidya Vadu Jivanam, Anandam Budi Vardhanam, then you have to start from the beginning. And that is Adho Sraddha, first having faith. Faith means faith in Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. You'll have to take initiation. You'll have to go through the stage of Bhajana Kriya, Anatta Nivriti, Nishta, Steadiness, Ruchi, and then in the stage of Asakti, by doing Kirtan in the association of pure devotees, he will come into the stage of deep attachment. Then, up to this point, his chanting is Namabhas, semblance of Nam, not Shuddha Nam. But then, by the influence of good association, when he realizes relationship, at that time, when he begins to chant, then Shuddha Nam comes. This is the name which has been glorified throughout the scriptures as being the Nama Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purnasha Dhoni Tamukta Abhinakwam Nama Namino. This is the name which is Abhinakwam, which is non different from Krishna. This is the name which is Chintamani, which fulfills every single spiritual desire that the soul can ever have. This is the name which is Chaitanya Swarup, which is fully conscious, living, breathing, walking, talking, laughing, joking, smiling, singing, and dancing. That name. This is the name, which is Chaitanya Rasa Vibraha, which is the embodiment of all Rasa. Akela Rasa Mrita Murti Prasimara Ruchi Vada Taraka Pali. Kalita Shambhala Leto Radha Prayan Rito Jayati. This is the name, which in the association of Lalita Vishaka Chitta Champakalata and Shivati Radhika is performing sweet pastimes. That is the name, which has been glorified throughout the Vedas. So if we want to realize that name, we have to take shelter of Sadhguru. Receive initiation and become established in our relationship with Krishna and Sambandha Gyan. So he cleared the subject. Without Guru, name 
what anyone chants. Oh, this is aparad. Kabu namabash. Rea becomes namabash. It has been told that Guru Kripa Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. Bhakti comes from a seed given by Guru Rupi Krishna. Krishna does not give it directly to anyone. Throw any guru. <coughs> or himself he becomes guru and then leaves. So without guru, that name is not transcendental. It will fulfill your worldly desire. <coughs> or even up to mukti. Not more than this. The, in case of Ajami, first he has no guru. And he kept his son name Narayan. By charms, because he was in Vedic culture. <coughs> So he kept, <coughs> and only this name, when he kept, this was Namabhash. First time? First, First time. now, when he kept. Your name is Narayam, only this. No, no. <laughs> he kept, oh, yeah. when boys are given name, mm -hmm. Nam Sanskar. Oh. In Nam's name Sanskar, he, oh, he kept his, the son, uh, his name, <coughs> Narayam. <coughs> This was first. And after what he, oh Narayan, come, come on, come on, daily he used. Oh, this was like Abhyas. Sadhan. Eh? Sadhan. Sadhan. What, was like the effect, what was the effect of the first name? This eh? first name, what effect? What oh, result of first name? I'm telling you. And by doing so, in the last time, when he was dying, and he saw, Jamdut in a very ferocious, ferocious form and he feared <coughs> and then automatically the name of his son came Narayan Bhar. and at that time in the last time oh, Krishna sent his messenger for and the dialogue between Jamdut and Narayan Dut, he heard. And they drove out Jamdut. <laughs> and thus he knew the glorification and heard the name of Narayan from them. Now he received the name from this name Narayan. From where? Oh, that, that. And then the seed of bhakti came, otherwise not. And then he left, he was alive, became alive. And then he thought that, oh, <coughs> this name is so powerful that I heard from four Vishnu Dots. Oh, the glory of this name is so wonderful. Now I have received that mantra and I should give up my this life, uh, lady, this wife, that wife, all <coughs> children and everything. And he left everything and went to Haridwa. He took bath in Ganges and he sat down there. And now pure name he began to chant. Again these four where they came. Because up till now he has came in the stage of eh, Rati Sampat. But Paikuntiya Rati, not Bhardva. And thus they came and told, now that you should come with us and sit in this Bhiman chariot. He told, I have a question. 
that first I wanted to speak with you, I, I wanted to touch your feet. And first, uh, when, when Jamdut were driven, but uh, you disappeared. But now you have come and telling me to come with me. How is this? Oh, now we gave you pure name, the seat of Bhakti Lata. And by chanting and taking both in Ganges, now you are purified, so much purified. And now Rati, by Kuntia Rati has come. Now you are qualified to come in Vaikuntha. And thus they took him to Vaikuntha. But in the case of Dhruva, still he, he, he had what? some attraction, some attachment to his mother. That is why he could not go. Though he was disciple of Narada. Also you should remember that. Balmiki Rishi was disciple of Narada. And in his first career of life, he was docked. And he has killed so many Brahmins, so many millions of Brahmins and Tapasvi, and took his wealth. In the meantime, Narodeshi met him. And then he told, so many katha are there, but in the last he told that you should sit here. And I'm giving you your name. And he gave name. Hmm? You should chant Ram. But he was not qualified to chant Ram Ram. Then he told, oh, you should even Mara 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 Mara. Oh, that can I do. And he began to do Mara Mara Mara. But as he was disciple of Narad, so there was consideration. More consideration than Vishnu do. Conception. Conception. Uh, Conception. 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 Because this is always remember. Ram has Guru also. And then what became of that Balmiki? He wrote Ram Lila. He saw in his trance uh, Samadhi Vasa like Bhagavat was written by Vyas. So Raman by Balmiki was what? Samadhi Bhasha. Trans language. Trans language. Trans language. Trans language. And he saw everything, everything in his, like anything in him. And then he wrote before Ram, played all the past time. So, like this we should think. Without Guru, you are bound to do some. Uh, attachment and uh, some namaparat. No sambandhya and no seed given by you. That is no sabda brahma. So it is essential. You can ask me that how Krishna is what supreme Lord. Supreme Personality of God. But even he has met Guru. Once gopis were telling Krishna so many asking questions and Krishna was replying. They asked, you have no Guru? Oh, who tells like this? Oh, my Guru is Bhaguri. He did not call the name of Sandipni. Why? He was his, like a Shiksha Guru of art and like other things. Like a teacher, school teacher. Like a school teacher. And at that time but he was not in Mathura, also in Vrindavan. Yes. At that time he was not even Guru Kuliya. And from Bhagavad Gita, what? Radha Mantra. Radha Mantra. He <laughs> took Radha Mantra. Wow. So, Bhagavad is really the Guru of Krishna. In this world, when 
कृष्ण डिसाइन और एनी एनी वन महाप्रभु लाइक महाप्रभु वाट डी ही टो परिणाम फ्रॉम होम ही हेम सेल्फ टोड महाप्रभु गुरु मोरे मूर्ख देखी गुरु मोरे मूर्ख देखी कोयला शासन तुम ही मूर्ख तुम्हारे नहीं वेदांत अधिकार तुम्हारे नहीं वेदांत अधिकार यू हैव नो क्वालिफिकेशन टू इंटर इन वेदांत थ्योरी सो यू आर लाइक ए फुलिस इग्नोरेंट ओ यू शुड डू नाउ हरे नाम हरे नाम हरे नाम भाई वो क्या बोल रहे हैं कलो नास्ते वो नास्ते वो नास्ते एंड ही गेट दिस नेम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम भाई ही कुछ नेट टेल दी नेम ऑफ बात गुरु भारती केशव भारती he was only he get sannyas yes <coughs> those sannyas is also not less anything but even he get mahaprabhu gave first to keshav and he get first mantra to keshav keshav bhati and then <laughs> so oh he told keshav um, the name of his guru so he is telling that that mantra made me mad Which mantra, which was given by his Guru Ishwar Kripa? If it was not given, the result would not be like this. No praying, nothing. Only worldly desires. Without some bandhya, so we should try to know all these things. Oh. You know, Dhruva, Bhakti has a gradation, and Sri Rasanathan Goswami has told the gradation of Bhakti. <coughs> Gyani Bhakta, first Shakam Bhakta, then Gyani Bhakta, also Karmi Bhakta, Karmi Bhakti Shakami Bhakta, then Gyani Bhakta, and then Gyani. Bhakta, then pure bhakta, and then prem par bhakta, premi bhakta, and then prem par bhakta, then prema. This is up to this. This is the category of bhakta. Gopi are not in any category of this. They are beyond beyond this. Krishna is Gopi. Yeah. Krishna has become Gopi. The manifestation of Radhika are all the gopis, and Krishna divided himself in right and left, right and left side. 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 Yeah. From left, he became Radhika himself. So Radhika is not other than Krishna. Krishna. So all the gopis are manifestation of Radhika means manifestation of. That is why quite has been told. What in Brahma? Tabi tabi je evan or rupa kaya kala. That is why it has been told. So there is so much gradation. I want to that I want that Padma Shri Man Padma Nam Mara. should uh, uh, tell the upakhan of dhruva and in what category was and what he received good <coughs> before you speak you said that radharani is not different from krishna she's coming from krishna And because she's Krishna, because she's not different, she also has the qualities of Krishna, which means she has no other origin, just like Krishna has no origin. But isn't her origin Krishna? What again? She says you told that Sri Mati Radhika, because she is not different from Krishna, she has the same qualities as Krishna. But isn't it that just like Krishna has no origin, that Sri Mati Radhika? No, Mati Radhika. She is. Uh, the origin of Sri Mati Radhika is Krishna, but if she has the same qualities as Krishna, then she should also have no origin. Or tree and its fruits. 
all the fruit comes from tree tree, tree comes so tree is fruit also but though it has come from tree fruit are sweet the <laughs> the tree is <laughs> <are> not sweet <laughs> <laughs> okay Om gyana timidanda sarvanga shalaka chakshurun militam yena tasmai sri gurave namaha gurave gaur chandraya radhikaya istadaya Krishna, Krishna Bhakta, Tadu Bhakta, Mo 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 Pancha Kaptru Nascha Viva Sindhu Viva Cha Patita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namo So Shri Gurudev has ordered me to tell the uh, Dhruva Maharaj Upakyan from Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto and to explain what category of Bhakta uh, Dhruva Maharaj was in, in this uh, hierarchy of bhaktas, coming from Sakam Bhakta all the way up to Prematura Bhakta. So, <clears throat> Dhruva Maharaj uh, was living uh, in Satya Yuk, and he was the son of uh, a very highly uh, elevated king, uh, Maharaj Uttanapat. And uh, he was the uh, son of Maharaj Uttanapad's second wife. He had two wives, Suruji and Suniti. And he was the son of Suniti. These two wives, uh, actually, uh, Maharaj Uttanapad had a special liking for Suruji. Actually, the meaning of Suruji means one who is very inclined toward tasting the material enjoyment of this world. So when Maharaj Uttanapad would be in the association of his wife Suruji, well, he would become inclined in that direction. And when he was in the association of Dhruva Maharaj's mother, Suniti, uh, Suniti means one who is inclined toward dharma, toward relation with the Supreme Lord, Krishna. And when he was in the association of Suniti, uh, then he would become in inclined in that way. So uh, always he was being influenced back and forth. Now, one day, Dhruva Maharaj, when he was only a five-year-old boy, although he was the son of Maharaj Uttanapad, one day he came into the court where Maharaj Uttanapad was sitting on the throne, and he wanted to climb upon the lap of his father, like uh, any son would do, a little five-year-old boy. So he made the attempt to climb on the lap of his father. And at that time, the other mother, uh, Suruji, she told to Dhruva, she said, Oh, you cannot climb on the lap of your father because you have not taken birth from my womb. So if you want to sit on the throne of your father, then you will have to take birth in your next life from my womb and then you will become qualified to sit on the throne of your father. So when Dhruva Maharaj heard this, he was completely pierced in his heart. And actually, his father did not protest either. Why? Because he was so much influenced by this other wife, Suruji. So he remained silent. And Dhruva Maharaj was deeply wounded in his heart. Little Kshatriya boy, son of royalty. And his heart was, it was as if sometimes if you step on a snake, the snake will become very much uh, it will begin to hiss and it will jump up like this. So in the same way, Dhruva Maharaj became very uh, pierced in his heart. And he went crying to his mother, Suniti. And he told to his mother, Suniti, what had happened. And he was crying and saying, is this true? Is this true what she told? And then uh, Suniti told that actually it is true that I am not the favorite of your father. And uh, it is a fact that you will not be able to have his favor in this life because you have come from my womb. But actually, uh, you can achieve all things because Dhruva Maharaj at that time, he became very desirous in his heart, a desire developed that he wanted to attain a kingdom 
even greater than his own father's kingdom. And in this way, he would show that, yes, I can attain this royal position. And not only greater than his father's kingdom, even his grandfather's kingdom. And who was coming in his grandfather's kingdom? Swayam Bhuva Manu. Huh? And who was the great-grandfather? Lord Brahma himself. So Lord Brahma's kingdom is the entire universe. Dhruva Maharaj had such a very strong desire and determination. He wanted to achieve this position because he felt so deeply wounded and insulted. Such was, such was the nature of Kshatriya in those times. So then his mother told to him that actually this desire of yours, it can be fulfilled. <clears throat> because the Supreme Personality of Godhead, actually without worshipping Him, no one can fulfill <coughs> any of their desires fully. So if you want, then you should go to the forest where the Supreme Personality of Godhead is staying. In the forest, the sages go there and they meditate upon Him and they realize Him there in the forest. So at that time, the young boy Dhruva, he became very much determined. Yes, now I will immediately leave and he left the palace, the royal palace, and immediately began marching toward the forest. So as he was going toward the forest, along the way, the great sage, Sri Narada Rishi, Narad Muni, he saw the determination in the heart of this young boy. And he came there, and he came in front of him, and he stopped him. And he said, oh, my dear young boy, where are you going? And Dhruva Maharaj told, oh, I am going to the forest. I want to search out the Supreme Lord. I want a very great kingdom, as great as the kingdom of my great-grandfather. Huh? So Narada Muni told him, Oh, this is very difficult, what you are trying to do, to go to the forest, to perform very great austerities in the forest. You're just a young boy. You're just five years old. Why should you undergo so much trouble? It is better that you go back to your palace and you can uh, engage in your school and your play and all of these things. And Dhruva Maharaj, he, he told, no, I am determined that I will go to the forest and I will realize I will meet the Supreme Lord himself. So at this time, Narada Muni, he took uh, compassion upon Dhruva and he gave Dhruva Maharaj the benediction of initiation into a mantra, huh, which by chanting this mantra, with great determination, he would be able to achieve his goal. So he gave him this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate <laughs> So, I didn't Don't say it. Don't the months. He did not I tell. I didn't tell. It is sinful. He did not. He only told he, two words. He gave one instead of half and they give instead of half. Also the mantra that they uttered is wrong. <coughs> Bhagavate no. Bhagavate. Bhagavate. Go. <laughs> so now, uh, Dhruva Maharaj again went on his path and he went into the forest. Now when he came into the forest, there, he began to take bath in the sacred river and keep himself very clean. And now he began to perform austerities and penance to purify his heart. And he was chanting this mantra. Actually, he was following very strictly the order of Narada Rishi, that he should meditate upon this mantra with unwavering mind, with unwavering attention. And this way, he was following the order of Guru. So at the same time, he was performing very severe austerities. And gradually, gradually, he was reducing all of his eating. Uh, practically, he was stopping his eating over a period of months. He was only, some, at first, in the beginning, he was eating only some leaves of the trees. And then he stopped eating the leaves of the trees even. Then he started taking only water. And then after some days, he started taking water only once every few days. And eventually, in the course of his performing this austerity, even he was standing on one leg. And for six months, he was performing this severe austerity and chanting this mantra. <clears throat> and even at the end, he stopped his very breathing by the process of pranayam. He controlled his breathing, and even he stopped breathing completely. And at that point, oh, all the demigods in the heavenly planets, and Lord Brahma himself, they became very alarmed. 
the whole, they felt as if the whole universe was being choked by his austerity. And also, please save the situation. So at that time, uh, Lord Vishnu himself came there and manifested uh, right before the very eyes of Dhruva Maharaj. And Dhruva Maharaj, at that time, he envisioned him both within his heart and externally he saw him standing in front of him. And then at that moment, he became completely absorbed in the beautiful transcendental Sri Vigraha of Lord Narayan. And he began, all tears, ecstatic symptoms began manifesting on his body, trembling of the body, all ashtasapika vikar. And at that point, he fell down with full dandavat pranams. Uh -huh. And just as a tiny little boy, he sat up, little five-year-old boy. And then Lord Vishnu took his kan shell and he touched it on the head of Dhruva Maharaj. <coughs> and then at that time, Dhruva Maharaj became enlightened within his heart and he began to pray so many very beautiful prayers to Lord Vishnu. But especially at that time, Dhruva Maharaj, he admitted, he told to Lord Vishnu that actually now that I have seen you, although I have come here searching for so such a, a materialistic goal in life, although very very great goal, but only it is a materialistic goal, it's only for satisfying material desire. So I came to the forest to search for you, but really it was as if I was searching for little broken pieces of glass lying on the ground. So insignificant, this material desire of mine. But now that I have seen you, now that I have met you, it is as if I have found a very beautiful jewel. And at that time, he told Swamin Kripar Tosmi Varam Najate. Actually, now I don't want any benediction. But Lord Vishnu told to him that no, I want to give you a benediction. I want that you will ask for me this boon that you have come here for. But Dhruva Maharaj was so reluctant, and now his heart was feeling very sad that he was being told that he should ask for this benediction. Oh never told to ask any benediction. In Bhagavatam, not like this. He knew that he has come and <clears throat> authority is for only of that kingdom. And that, why, that is why, without asking any boon, he himself told, I am giving now the kingdom of whole universe life. For 36,000 years. For 36,000 years. And he disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> disappear. And then he began to be. What had done mistake? I was searching a piece of glass. Broken glass. Broken glass. But anyhow, I was fortunate to have a <laughs> chintamani, but I lost. Why I took this? Hmm? Began to rebel. But what is the essence of this upakhyan? What became in the Lord? So, <coughs> Dhruva Maharaj, he actually had to accept this benediction <coughs> before he was able to attain the eternal Vaikuntha Loka planet, which ultimately uh, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan bestowed upon him. Because he had approached with this material desire initially, therefore, for some period of time, he had to still enjoy this result. Uh, from his material approach. And he had to remain within this material universe in the position of emperor for 36,000 years. And then at that time, at the end, uh, when this 36,000 year period was finished, then Dhruva Maharaj uh, saw a beautiful swan airplane coming from Vaikuntha Loka, and it was coming, landing, and ready to transport him there. And at that time, Dhruva Maharaj, he was just about to step into the air, airplane, and suddenly, death personified came there in front of him and bowed his head at the feet of Dhruva. And Dhruva Maharaj put his foot uh, over the head of death personified, and he began to climb into this airplane. But just at that moment, he hesitated. 
And then he told to the Vishnu Dutas who were there that, oh, but my mother, Suniti, she is the one who actually set me on this path. So she is my Bhartma Pradarshak Guru. How I can go to Vaikuntha without her? And at that time, the Vishnu Dutas told, oh, just see behind here. There is another, another airplane is coming, and she is in that airplane. So the point is that in the stage of sadhana, someone is performing sadhana to attain the goal, the sadhya. But if he is performing sadhana with so many materialistic desires that he wants fulfilled, then the fact is that he will first of all have to remain here within this world and he will not attain that final highest goal of Krishna Prem. That goal will be delayed. And he will have to uh, attain this temporary benefit only. Huh? Just like by Nama Parad, so many material results can be attained. So much wealth, so much uh, influence and power, so many material enjoyments can be attained by Nama Parad. Huh? And by Nama Bas, oh, also Mukti, liberation can be attained. But only by Shuddhana, only by chanting pure Shuddhana in the association of Guru and Vaishnavas, then we can attain Krishna Prem. So Dhruva Maharaj, even though he had this materialistic desire and he was coming purely for a materialistic goal, there is another lesson to be learned. Because he had Satguru, because Narada Rishi came and Narada Rishi instructed him in the chanting of this mantra and gave him initiation. Even though he had these materialistic desires, because he strictly followed his guru, because he uh, followed him completely, fully, therefore, because he was connected with guru, these material desires within his heart became purified by his practice of sadhan bhajan. So we should understand the necessity of taking shelter of Satguru if we want to attain perfection in Krishna Nam Bhajam then it is absolutely essential that we have the shelter and guidance of Sadguru. And this is the essence of the teachings of this Dhruva Upakya. Thank you. And Madhav Maharaj wants to speak something. Madhav Maharaj. He was telling something about him when he was speaking. He told that he's... Okay, you should stand up and tell. <laughs> What he was telling? He said that his mother's airplane already gone. It was not behind it, it was in front. <laughs> so he was telling that he One thing here. <coughs> the essence of this Upakya. <coughs> Though Nadrishi uh, was initiated by him. He, a bona fide guru like Nara. But at that time he has so many desires to rule over the whole world. He wanted. He received initiation from North Rishi too. And he did very hard stories, even not taking Prayer, yeah, yeah. control the prayer, air also. And after that he received the position he wanted. Automatically. His father came and told that, oh, everything is yours. And then he sat on the throne and he began to rule, rule our whole world. But what he did? He used to serve Hari Guru Vaishnava always because he was disciple of Narada. And thus, sometimes Narada used to come, sometimes other highly elevated Vaishnava, elevated Vaishnava used to come there. And he used to serve them. And they used to instruct them. So, in 60, 36,000 uh, 36, years, he was somewhat elevated. Now his <laughs> desire to have a throne totally gone. 
one thing is here if he is he has worldly desire even and he he only uh, does the aradhana of supreme lord krishna or his manifestations aram nishinga kalki bhav narayan then <coughs> in the end all karma vasna goes and pure bhakti comes so by the association of narad rishi and other high elevated rishis all his desire gone and then bhakti came in his heart pure but there was something kashai smell kashai you know contamination like narad rishi in first life mochit kasai ha huh? mochit kasai no he was a yeah mochit kasai mochit kasai mochit kasai kasai no jagat kasai not mochi who has jagat kasai sukhdev goswami has murchit kasai no he is nirdut kasai nirdut kasai in previous life murchit kasai his kasai was there but jagrat jagrat also <laughs> and that is why he went to show see his mother her mother and that is why he could not attend vaikuntha dham but a manifestation of vaikuntha dham he drew lok in this brahma lok eh? in this brahmanda in this brahman he could not attend that brahman eh, that and any service of krishna but i don't know how he is now what position he has written because he was disciple of nar it may be after some time he will reject dhruva pada also and he may go by kuntha yes because this not told jar ami bigga sei murkhe bisay kana dubo sacharana mitore bisay bhulai bo if any bhakt of krishna आश्रय लैया भजे तारे कृष्ण नाही तजे व्हाट इज आश्रय यो गुरु और साधु हाई क्लास ऑफ शिक्षा दीक्षा गुरु दिस इज आश्रय दोस व टेकिंग सेंटर ऑफ कृष्ण इट मे बी दैट कृष्ण मे रिजेक्ट बट दोस हु विल टेक स्ट्रांग सेंटर ऑफ शिक्षा दीक्षा गुरु और एनी वैष्णव देन or oh, krishna will think that he wants some poison but how i can give he i know that this is poison and he is full i must give him nectar nectar of bhakti of my lotus and that is why he krishna gives in the end but also in the middle what he desire he has to taste and after that he <coughs> pure bhakti huh? pure bhakti pure bhakti he did this is the <coughs> instruction in this and this is the essence of this upak now uh, i wanted to compare the bhakti of dhruva and bhakti of prahlad what time some drama is there drama drama is also there so 15 minutes we can we speak and after that drama or any song and after that drama so you can do